Okay, so I'm here with Jeff and David from Block Island, here to represent this fantastic feature of Fusion. Welcome, Jeff, director, writer. Thank you. David, exec producer happy and to be here. one of the lead actors. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Who's going to give me the synopsis? Uh, happy to. I okay. don't know why I'm looking at the camera. <laughs> you never look at the it's camera. It's better than looking at my face. <laughs> yeah. That's what people do. It, so, um, so yeah, it's a, a psychological thriller about a screenwriter who uh, rents a house for the weekend to finish up a project. Uh, while he's there, some women from his past reappear. Mm -hmm. uh, storm hits, they get stuck in the house together, and uh, weird things start to happen. Uh, can't really go into too many <laughs> no, more no, details no behind that, alerts, with, yeah, yeah, getting into you know spoilers, but um, mm. uh, some of the themes mm. uh, that were really uh, big for this film as well is kind of the idea of uh, um, isolation, grief, um, getting over past traumas, mm. um, so, so yeah. Okay, and um, your gig, I know your gig on this app. Tell me about your, not just your, well actually I'm interested in how you became one of the lead actors. How did that all fall into place? <laughs> well, uh, were, were you the producer first? Or what, well, what yeah, I mean all of this sort of came together at the same time. Um, we decided back in 2017 that we were going to start a movie company, um, start a production company. Jeff wrote us a script yep. and um, within, what, less than two years? Uh, we had a product done, and yeah. so Jeff really did write the script with uh, me in mind, and so... Oh, right, okay. Yeah. yeah, so I wrote it for David in mind for lead, uh, the idea that um, we would shoot on one location, so we filmed it in our house, actually. Uh, so I wrote oh, into really? that. Oh, really? Yep. What about the, exter and the, ex the, what, so the, the exteriors? In, in your yes, so the exterior is not our house. We used a friend's house for that. Um, we got some uh, footage for, like, you know, beach, kind of to get atmosphere, atmospherics for yeah. the setting. Uh, but all the interiors were done in the house, so I wrote it for that. Yeah. Wrote it for a uh, small cast, um, with everything in mind that this was going to be our production that we were starting together. So. Because it has a kind of, if you don't mind me saying, it's a kind of Stephen King vibe about it, <laughs> the feel about it. I'm, I'm sure that's what well, maybe we were, right, were right for that. But the, the problem, I guess, or one of the problems I can see is when it's a small cast and pretty much in a small location or small, small you've got to make sure the writing hits the notes because it's hard isn't it yeah you know I don't, so what i'm getting at is how did you make what is there a trick to keep it people interested because you can easily flag on that kind of thing. sure um i don't know i've been doing scripts for a few years so i've gotten used to tightening them up and kind of getting them uh pretty efficient so when i did this i i think i was kind of in the rhythm mm. um, which helped quite a bit um and a lot of times when I uh, have a script, I'll just kind of read out loud. Mm -hmm. I'll see if the dialogue seems to fit. Yeah. I'll, you know, kind of look at the pacing to see if it, if it matches up, if it's kind of moving forward pretty well. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, yeah. it's just something that I've been working on, and I'm just comfortable with yeah. it. And I'll say from an actor's perspective, it was absolutely immersive having to be in the same house. I mean, we all slept in the house that we were working in for that entire two-week period. I hope and it was so rent-free. Oh, it was their house. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's rent free. Um, <laughs> no, and so to, to be with that small cast in that space for two weeks of filming, 12 hour shoots, um, it was very much immersive, very intense, um, really electric, having to sort of push through within a very short period of time. Uh, and what about, do, what, do you ever have instances when you're looking at the script or you're shoot, say you're shooting one morning, are you just saying, this line is not working, despite all these mm. drafts I've done, or you may say, well, this line is, um, did, yeah. was there any of those, those instances? I think so, yeah, yeah. sure. Um, so for me, uh, directing actors, I, I like to um, have them kind of give me the performance first before I give notes. Mm. Uh, so if, we've had, if we would have time ahead of time, we would kind of rehearse while you know, the crew was setting up. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes a line just wouldn't feel natural. Yeah. Um, so I'd have the actors kind of, well, how would you say this? Um, and they would kind of give me something that works for, for them, um, and it would be good. And then other times it would be something where, no, I need you to say this exact thing because it's, it's setting something else up or it's foreshadowing or it's a play on words. Um, so it's kind of just working together with the actors to figure out when can we change it and when does it have to, to hit uh, with that dialogue. I think that's why we worked so well together. There's yeah. a sort of like, I respect the work you've done, I respect the script you've written, but at the same time, Jeff trusted a lot of us with sort of taking liberties or, or seeing where a script would naturally go. Um, so I think that's why it worked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do you, let's say you, you're, you're well, not say, I oh, know, you're doing a sequence yeah. with three or four other people in it, and yet behind you, or this way, you've got all this crew, right? Yeah. Because you have, you've got the camera, the, yeah. 
well, sorry, the DOP, you've got the director, uh, you've got someone holding the boom. Anyway, the list goes on and on. So how do you, is it, is there a trick to maintain, because you've got to maintain tension. Sure. Because of this course, it's yeah. all about the script. I mean, it's, right. it's ominous, if that's yeah. the right word. Is there a trick to do that? When all this is going on, I know they're all silent. There's nothing going they're on not back moved. there. They're just completely, <laughs> but they're still there. That's what but I they're not. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. So no, no. Very method. Um, well, not method, yeah. but I... Oh, guess what Tron says, how do you blank that out? You just do. You have to. I mean, I think the script itself was so gripping and the story itself was so was so tense yeah. that it was easy to get lost. And also, I have to say, the cast that we had was wonderful to work with. Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah. Especially, I mean, Diana, our other lead, she and I clicked so quickly. And yeah. so working with her, everything else disappeared. And is it literally a case of when the filming finishes, right, finished, right, open the fridge, beer, wine, and, or whatever? I mean, is it literally from a, you know, that transition? I mean, I don't know. I don't know like on the set. I think at the end of a 12-hour shoot, we just went to bed. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty exhausting. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. you had the luxury to go to bed a little bit, but Leila True. and I were kind of like, all right, we, what went well today? Um, what, what can we do tomorrow that'll make it a little more efficient? Um, is there anything that, you know, in the script, is there anything that, okay, do I need to make any tweaks based on something we might have changed today? Mm -hmm. um, which usually wasn't the case, I mean, right. but, but things like that. How can, how can we make tomorrow smooth? What went well? What, what didn't? So it's still game planning. Yeah. So it's a 12 hour shoot, but for some of us, it was still working for a bit beyond. So it was, yeah. it was kind of hard to turn off. <laughs> and can you tell, I mean, I know this was your, your, your place, but even so you've got to dress it to give it a kind of look that you want, because I'm assuming you don't live in this interior, <laughs> of course you don't, right? But how do you go about that? I mean, because you've got to envisage all that, and what's, what's involved in doing that to get it the way you want it to look? Because it's a complete redecoration. Yeah, well, a lot of the stuff, uh, again, when I was writing, I was writing it for our house, so I would incorporate some of the, you know, decorations that we might have or things that we own that I could pull out. So there's a lot of the set decorations. Um, I, maybe we just have a twisted sense of uh, <laughs> interior decorating, I don't know, but... But I don't want to know. Yeah, but, but some of you know, we we would go out and buy like you know darker curtains, more drab, kind mm -hmm. of, uh, kind of doing things like that. So it it felt less like we were filming in our house at certain points, and more like we were living on a set. Yeah. Uh, so you'd go to bed at night, and equipment would be all over the floor, yeah. and you know all, all that kind of stuff. And plenty of moments where we'd look through the monitor and we'd realize, oh no, we need to take that down. That can't stay there anymore. Well, no, oh, yeah. that was, honestly, that was going to lead me on to my next question. Yeah. So you, you've got this look, and effectively, it's your film in the sense that you've written it, and you know where you want to go, and you're the director. But how does it work as a collective when you're talking about how it should look in reality? Because you might be looking at part of the set and saying, you know what? Or you might be saying, I'm not sure. I mean, is it like a team? How does it sort of play yeah. out? Sure, yeah, it was definitely a team. Uh, it was a team effort for so many different uh, aspects of this. but. A lot of people would kind of, well, is that supposed to be there? That, that shouldn't be there. This doesn't look right. Our cinematographer was great uh, with stuff. Like that, uh, you know, that, that's, that's not working here, you know. Yeah. Even if it's something for the lighting. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's too bright. You know, that makes the scene kind of, you lose some of the darkness. Yeah. So she was great about that stuff too. Like even if it was a pillow, mm -hmm. something just like just that. So. No, but you have just, to be just so, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. so. So ever, it was kind of all hands on deck. Um, it was a very small crew, so. And collaborative because of how small yeah. it was. Yeah, so it was very collaborative. So we'd have people who were, you know, it wasn't their intended role to do set decoration, but they'd be coming in and helping us and getting things uh, prepped and ready. So. And what I didn't ask is, I know that you wrote it and you, you had an idea, but there must be a starting point because this could have turned out to be any number of films, couldn't it? Sure. You know, so did you jettison ideas or where's the start? Because oh, there yeah. must be a start. Oh yeah, so um, when we started, we uh, had the idea of, okay, we're gonna make a horror film. Yeah. Because uh, those are more marketable. They're, they're you know, yeah. you could film those. Yeah. if. If it looks a little sloppy, that might be okay, and not that our film did. I oh, I see. So you do have leeway when you're that. But, but yeah, we were kind of thinking that as kind of our starting point. Um, but of course, uh, as I'm coming up with ideas, um, what happened with me is what's the most horrifying thing I could think of? And without getting into specifics of the film, kind of near the end, uh, where you kind of realize what's going on, uh, for me, that's just horrifying. So. I, I wrote that end in mind, mm. um, but that doesn't quite work for traditional horror, so it kind of started to morph into more of a psychological thriller. And how do you, because I mean, this is my personal opinion, I've got a clue about film, is I always think less is more, so, mm. you know, when there's, I always think of something like Psycho, right, and you don't really see too much, do you, but yeah. how do you, I mean, I, I haven't said that, I don't know the way you work, maybe you like it to be 
fully shown, but how do you how do you pull back and not reveal too much? I guess what I'm, I'm kind of getting at. Sure. Um, well, I think a, a good um, uh, my wife Layla, who's one of the uh, business partners, uh, one of the producers here, kind of had a good uh, way of putting it, where you know this this film takes a lot of twists and turns, mm. um, so you don't want to you know project where we're going necessarily, mm. but you still want to leave breadcrumbs, yeah. so that you know when there's this twist at the end, or, or when things go in a direction that maybe you didn't expect, um, it's not going to come out of left field. Where if you watch it a second time, knowing the ending, you oh, of course. Yeah. Why didn't I see that? Um, so I wanted to reveal little things um, here and there, uh, but without giving away the end game. So it's just a matter of pacing. What, when should when should we kind of introduce this element or that element? And, um, it was just kind of more feel. What felt right? And subtlety that's not too subtle. Otherwise, it gets lost. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what, sure. Yeah. What was the best part about this? What was the most fun thing? I think for me, it was just being on set and yeah. and being with everybody and making this this for us this beast of a project because yep. we just dove in and wanted to do a feature length without yeah. having done anything else uh, prior with, with the production company. So yeah. just diving in. Yeah, I think working on the schedule that we were working on, knowing that we did not have an infinite number of takes, that there were only so many minutes or so many you've hours to get, to get something done. done. Yeah, and so knowing, like, you need to get this right. It was, um, and actually what was kind of fun, I shouldn't probably say this, but uh, <laughs> we were kind of keeping our cinematographer on our toes. Uh, she's uh, uh, been around for, for years and years, really professional, a great resource of knowledge, but she knows how things are done. Yeah. So when we come in and we're like, we don't have the time, we literally don't have the time to to do this, we were moving, yeah. so our, our set was actually going to go away. And David's a school teacher from New York, so he yeah. could only come down to the DC area on, on uh, vacation <laughs> weeks. So we didn't have a lot of time to necessarily like go with yep. it. So uh, near the end, we were doing like one take shots, and our <laughs> oh. cinematographer was <laughs> just like losing her mind, I think. But but you know that was just a testament to how great the crew was. Yeah, they would get everything set up. It would look great. There was no like booms in mm. shot or or lights or anything like that. The the setups were perfect, and the actors were yeah. just giving amazing performances, not fumbling over words, and mm. we were able to do that. Which is what I love. Friends have always asked, like, do you have a good blooper reel? Do you have a good setup? And we're like, we actually don't have bloopers because we had to move so quickly yeah. and through things. Brilliant, so. guys. That's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you so much. Great, great fun. Absolutely.